outdoor supervision. Statistics show that the majority of accidents in childcare are on the playground, especially with climbers. Some examples are cuts, bruises, and even concussions. It's very important for staff to move around and observe children, guide and encourage them, help to resolve conflicts before a problem arises, teach the children how to resolve their conflicts without hurting each other. Don't sit in groups talking. Parents are counting on you to keep their child safe. Your involvement with the children enhances their play makes the time go by quickly for you, plus children like the teacher to be involved with them. Licensing values you as a staff member, and we know you and your hard work help to ensure that our children are safe and well cared for. A spirit of cooperation and friendliness is always appreciated. Remember we are both in a profession that believes that children are important and deserve quality care while they are away from their homes. As a team, we can strive for quality child care for all children. Well, we've covered just about everything. In our last segment, you found out how the center should be set up, but you may still have some questions about how you interact with the children in your care. Let's take a look at a video put together by Sue McCauley on guidance and appropriate discipline. Guidance and appropriate discipline really are the key to having continued good days and good experiences with the children in your care. Guidance should be constructive and educational, which means that it's right for the age of the children and for the circumstances that the children are in. You are the director in the classroom. You are their guide. Using appropriate discipline does not look like punishment at all. It's not about being a boss over the children in your care. It's about being a good example and showing them the way. First, you need to be in your classroom in body, mind, and spirit. Leave the things that are bothering you behind. And for the most part, when the children come into your classroom, you'll be able to forget all of the other things that are going on around you anyway. You also have to have knowledge of what is appropriate for each age group. What do you do with infants or three-year-olds or six-year-olds? Let's go over some basic child development as we visit different classrooms and talk about certain things that you can expect from various age groups and then what you can do when you're faced with some challenges. I want to be very sure that you are clear about the state restrictions regarding discipline of a physical nature. No staff member shall subject children to punishment of a physical nature, such as shaking, striking or spanking, swatting, thumping, pinching, or popping, shoving, spatting, biting, no hair pulling, yanking, slamming, no excessive exercise or any other cruel treatment that may cause pain. These may seem different to you, but they're all negative contact. No one shall put anything in or on a child's mouth as punishment. No one shall restrain a child by any means other than holding and then for only as long as is necessary for the child to regain control. This is important if a child is in danger of harming someone else, the environment, or themselves. No one should subject children to punishment of a psychological nature, for example, humiliating them with negative or sarcastic remarks, or making remarks about their families, race, gender, religion, or their cultural background. No one should subject children to harsh or profane language, or actual or implied threats of physical punishment, and children should not be punished or threatened in association with food, rest, or toilet training. Children should never be isolated without supervision or placed in a dark area, and children should never be permitted to discipline other children. Children should not be disciplined as a group for the actions of just a few. 
and a caregiver should never seek or accept parental permission to use any of the previous uh, punishments or acts that we've just discussed. You may actually have a parent who wants for you to spank or gives you permission. This should be used as a learning opportunity. Let them know what the policy of the center is and explain to them what kinds of discipline you use in your classroom. So what is going on with an infant? Well, right now, discipline is not even appropriate to talk about here. Infants aren't out to misbehave. They don't know about making you mad. They'll cry because of some distress or fear or physical problem that they're having. They're not trying to make you mad. This is a time of change. You'll be tremendously important to the family and to the child. They need you. They need you to nurture them, to love them, to bond with them. You'll be expected to respond to them. And soon, after you become involved with an infant, you'll be able to respond to certain cries and gurglings. You'll know what those things mean. So even though it may be difficult at the first to be with an infant, in a very short while, you'll get to know their cues. Babies grunt, cry, and move about as they get a little older. Allow them an opportunity to move about and to explore. The most important issue right now is that you are vigilant in your supervision and that you keep them safe as they're exploring and moving around. Toddlers are very special. At this age, they're moving, growing, changing, learning a lot. But you do have special challenges if you're a, a teacher of toddlers. You also have children who can be crabby, can change moods very quickly, will probably bite, possibly bite, will be moving about very, very quickly as they're trying to learn and discover. They're also not going to be giving you very much verbal feedback on a day-to-day -day basis. When you're a teacher of toddlers, be sure that you have activities down on their level and be prepared for them to change activities very quickly. Be sure that you're looking at them when you're giving them directions so that they know that you're talking to them. Be kind, but be firm in your tone of voice. If they are hitting somebody, all you have to do is get down on their level and say, hitting hurts. Be nice to your friends. This is a very, very important time of discovery and growth, and it can be challenging, but it can be fun if you have realistic expectations of the children in your care. Have a good time with them. Get on the floor. Play with them. Talk with them. A two-year-old can be very charming or they can be very frustrating. They're still very, very egocentric. Everything is mine, mine, mine. And th they're very concerned about themselves. And even though they're beginning to pay a lot more attention to other children, it, they're still very territorial. So be prepared for those kind of things when you're working with a two-year-old. Uh, two-year-olds may still be biting they're probably going to be throwing some temper tantrums. And even though negative behavior is very difficult to ignore, some things will need to be ignored. If a child is having a tantrum, you may just need to be sure that they're safe, that the children around them are safe, and then move from, from that environment so that they can compose themselves. You can approach them later with something that they have um, shown an interest in in the past and try to distract them or get them involved in some kind of activity that would be pleasing to them. Sharing is another issue with two-year-olds. Again, they're very egocentric, so they're not going to be sharing. Be prepared to have enough things to go around in your classroom. Three-year-olds are generally very eager to please. They have increased language skills. They want to be around other children. They love their teacher, and they have a good time. But let's remember that we need to tell children what they can do as opposed to what they cannot do. Remind them that their feet are to stay on the floor. Remind them that they need to walk inside the classroom so that they'll be safe instead of using a lot of negatives such as don't and